Hi guys, how are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing really good and great. Uh, today we're going to give the third lecture of physiology of the special senses of the eye and that is the central neurophysiology of vision. In our previous chapters, we were studying all about first how image was formed at the fovea of the retina and the second chapter was that once the image has been formed at the fovea of the retina, how the receptors are stimulated, how they're excited and how they're inhibited. Now, how this chapter is going to deal with once the receptors have been stimulated, how they're going to carry that impulse from the retina all the way to the cerebral cortex is what this chapter is going to be continuing. Uh, teaching us. First of all, the topic is the visual pathways. The visual pathway co uh, consists of two methods. There is a new system and there is an old system. What happens in the new system and what happens in the old system? All right. The new system is basically what is going to comprise of this diagram that is shown to you on the next page. All right. In here, you see that there are two eyes, a left eye and there is a right eye. Now, when, for example, this is the object, when a person sees an object, obviously light rays will come to both of the eyes. The light rays will come to the right eye and the light rays will come to the left eye. Now, what, here you can see in the eyes they are shown with two different colors. The ones that have shown with your uh, red colors, they are going to be the nasal ones. means they are close to the nose. You see here that you see two color radiation. One is a blue color radiation and one is indicated with a red color. Now the impulses that are coming from this red color are gonna be coming near our nose. So if the nose is here, so the close to the nose will be this one and away from the nose will be this one. So this is coming from the temporal side and this is coming from the nasal side. Now, once they come into your eyes, they come at the retina. Now, once they are in the retina, now they have to reach to the brain. So they're going to leave the retina, both of these fibers, and they're going to enter into the optic nerves. Now, from the optic nerves, they're going to enter into the optic chiasma. In the optic chiasma, the ones which are coming from the temporal side, away from the nose, they're going to continue as they are. Means the left side will continue as the left side, and the right side will continue as the right. But the fibers that are coming from the nose one, they're going to cross with one another or desiccate with one another at your optic chiasma. So the ones which are coming from the left eye will be crossed over and come to the right. And the fibers of the right eye will be crossed over and will go to the left eye. Once they've done that, then they will continue and enter into the lateral geniculate bodies, which are situated in your thalamus. From the thalamus, they are then going to act as optic radiations, and they're going to enter into the visual cortex, which is situated in the occipital lobe of the brain. That was the new system. Now, apart from the thalamus, there are also other different locations where these fibers can come. Instead of going all the way to the visual cortex, they can come into your uh, hypothalamus. And in the hypothalamus, they come by means of a nucleus called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. And once if they enter and terminate in the hypothalamus, then the, what is their function is that they help in the circadian rhythm, how the person reacts in, in, in their daytime and in light time night and days of the body's reaction that is done in the hypothalamus then you have in the pretectal nuclei in the midbrain there can also be visual images that can come and which will help us to focus on it so if i want to focus on this then it will be basically the midbrain nucleus which is the pretectal nucleus which will help us to focus on the different objects then we have the third nucleus which is the superior colliculus nucleus and this is responsible for a direction like if this is the pencil and if I move it in the right then my eyeballs will also move in this side. So that is done by the superior colliculus nucleus. Then we have the last that is the ventral lateral, lateral geniculate nucleus. This is basically responsible for helping in our behavior function. How we can control our behavior like when we're stressed how our eyes are reacting, uh, how our eyes are, when we're happy then how our eyes are functioning, how image is done. So that was for that. Now, this uh, visual pathways, they can be divided into two systems, an old system and a new system. The old system is just uh, responsible 
for uh, from the midbrain all the way. So it will start from the brainstem, midbrain, and go all the way to your uh, cerebral cortex. Whereas the new system, it will go from the brainstem all the way to the midbrain, uh, to your cerebral cortex. Along, it will carry information about the colors, about the form, about the texture, everything which the old uh, your old system could not do. Now we will study about the fu uh, your functions of the lateral geniculate nucleus. The function of the lateral geniculate nucleus is same that I just told you that the image will come from both eyes. Here they will enter into your optic nerve. From the optic nerve, enter into the optic chiasma. The optic chiasma, the ones which are coming from the temporal ones, which are from away from the nerve, they're not going to desiccate. They will continue. The right one will continue as the right and the left will continue as the left. But the ones which are coming near the nose area, the nasal areas, they're going to desiccate. The right will go to the left and the left will go to the right. And then from there, they will go to the cerebral cortex. Apart from this, we have another function, uh, two more functions. Now, this lateral geniculate nucleus, it is basically going to consist of your six layers. Layers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, the odd number layers, which are your layer 2, 3, and 5, they're going to carry all the information which is coming from the ipsilateral side. Ipsilateral means the ones which are not going to cross over. They are the ipsilateral one. So, all the information that is coming from the temporal side ones, they're going to go and stimulate in layer number 2, 3, and 5. And the ones which are going to desiccate, they're going to de be terminated in layer number 1, 4, and 6. Okay? Then we have another major function of it, that is the gating function. The gating function is done by these two types of fibers, which are your corticofugal fibers and reticular areas of the mesencephalon, which is in the diencephalon. What they do is that basically once the image, it has passed from the fovea of the retina, passes through the optic chiasma, through that into the optic radi uh, in the thalamus, then optic radiation and in the cerebral cord. Now, once the image has been formed in the cerebral cord, now it will cause the image rays to fall back into the cell. Once it enters into the thalamus again by means of descending it will allow only the ones which are required like for example out of this 10 rays are going to come back down in the thalamus and out of here we only require one so it will allow only that one ray to pass and will stop the 10 rays to, uh, 9 rays to pass through so that is the second function of it. then uh, we have that this uh, dorsal lateral geniculate nucleus, which is located in the thalamus. It is divided into two types of layers. The layer 1 and 2, they are basically called as the magnocellular layers. They are the large neuron, and they basically are stimulated whenever we are seeing a black and white image, right? Where there's no color, then is the layer 1 and 2, which are stimulated. Your magnocellular layers are stimulated. Your M, retinal ganglionic cells are stimulated. But when I'm looking at a color image, like this image is color, then instead of my magnocellular layer or my M cells, it will be the P cells which will be stimulated and it will be a layer number 3 to layer number 6 which will be stimulated and then I'll be able to identify that, oh, this is red color, this is blue color, this is white, everything. Okay? All right. The next topic comes is uh, your organization and function of the visual cortex. Now, how this is located and organized in the brain. In the brain, basically, this visual cortex is located in the occipital lobe of your cerebral cortex, means at the back side. And here it is divided at the calcarine fissure, which you can see here. And this calcarine fissure consists of two areas, area number 17 and area number 18. Area number 17 is your primary visual cortex and area number 18 is your secondary visual cortex, also called as the association cortex. Now, what are the functions that are all happening in? For example, I'm just looking at this image, right? So when I look at this image, the same will take place. My image will go into my eyes. From the eyes will enter into the optic nerve. From optic nerve into optic chiasma. From optic chiasma into your thalamus. From thalamus to optic radiation. From there to the cerebral cortex. And we're in the cerebral cortex in area number 17 of the visual cortex of the occipital lobe. And then I will be able to identify that this is the brain or whatever. Now, if I want to look deep into it, that what are the different structures? present in it it's different colors everything i have to give more information about it like oh this is a green this is red so then in here all of this pathway will be repeated same but instead of going into the primary motor cortex it will go into the secondary motor cord and as a result the secondary and primary will work together and we will come to know about the complete knowledge of the brain that this is a brain and also that oh this is a green color this is the motor cord the red one is the somatic
a sensory cortex. The blue one is a for your 3D motion, everything. Okay, so that is basically the functions of your visual cortex. Okay, now the primary visual cortex, which is your area number 17, it basically consists of these six major layers, which is areas 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, Whenever an image is formed or your striation takes place of this impulses, they're going to go and strike this layer number four. Now, on striking at layer number four, depending upon the object, if the, uh, if the object is a black and white, then it will go and stimulate your C alpha cells. On stimulating the C alpha cells, they will then carry the impulses up to air layer number 1, 2, and 3, cause the stimulation of your M cells, and as a result, we will be able to identify the black and red color, white color. But if we're looking at a color body, right, if we're looking at different type of colors, then it will be the layer number of 4, but it will be the C beta and A cells which will be stimulated they will cause the P cells to be stimulated and as a result the same information will go but this time we will be able to identify the different colors present on it all right that is basically what they're telling you here all right so if you have M cells it is this one and if it is the P cell they're going to be and then they're going to go and uh, stimulate these color bulbs and by means of these color bulbs we will be able to identify the different colors and uh, uh, different colors of the object we are seeing all right so that was all for this one. Okay. Then <clears throat> we have your next topic that is your three-dimensional position. Now, this is very uh, easy if you come to understand. For example, you see, right? You see that I am seeing this pencil, right? This pencil, if I want to know everything about this pencil, its texture, its color, everything... Obviously, that whole will not be done by the primary cortex. For that, my both primary and secondary cortex has to function, right? Now, if this object, like right now it's color, imagine this is a black thing, right? Or just see this one. This is black, right? Now, if you want to pick out this one, it will go all the way to the visual cortex. Reaching the visual cortex, it is going to stimulate layer number one and two, which will go and stimulate your M ganglion and this will then tell what is the color of it and where this object is stationary or moving like this thing right now this clot is stationary but when we will walk it will move then we will come to know that now this thing is moving that was what is called as your motion of the orb the second is the visual detail and color this is done by the p cells which will tell us about this pencil like this is blue this is a hard thing and its texture everything that is done by the p cells so that was all till now. Hope this understands you guys. Thank you.